Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Syria, you have any comment? I would like to thank Louise for joining the conference of the mask making, mask providing um, project at the village market. Louise has made masks with Christmas themes right. and is asking a suggested donation of three dollars. And I understand that people are bumping it up to five. Just well, so, I, I, I so bumped far it. we're over. We're in the neighborhood of seven hundred and fifty dollars right. on that mask project, um, and it started a lot as a community service for people who wanted to come into the market and didn't have a mask. They were there wasn't a suggested amount for the donation, but um, now that everybody pretty much has their masks, people are are purchasing them for other reasons. So it's we're continuing to, to supply them here. If anybody's interested in shopping for it's a good place to go. Oh, yes, I make Louise. good stocking stuffers, and I also have some I just made that have adjustable uh, ear things. Ear loops, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. I'll have to go check them out. But we're asking more money. <laughs> so what are, what is, what are you right, asking now? $5. $5 we, is good. We were, we were advised to ask more because they were all gone in a few days. So Great. Right. And it makes a wonderful stocking stuffer. Right. So thank you. And it's a good cause. So, yes, you know, definitely, definitely. We're, we're usually and willing to pay a little more for a good cause. Right. And there are still some tote bags left over from last winter's project. So um, the tote bags are also a good Christmas gift. Right. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the November 16th meeting. I move to accept the minutes of the November 16th meeting. Um, were there corrections, Carl? Oh, I have to get a second first. Oh, okay. Um, I'll second. Any additions or corrections? Um, no, I don't believe there were any corrections. All right. Then all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the November 30th special meeting. I move to accept the minutes of the November 30th special meeting. I'll second that. Okay. Any additions or corrections? I think there was a correction on the time. <clears throat> it was probably a typo, the time um, that the uh, meeting ended. That has been corrected in the draft that was circulated to um, to everybody on Saturday. So, okay. Um, which, is the, which is the latest one. Okay. So it goes to the trustees for any corrections. And then the draft goes out to the mailing list. Okay. And uh, so that was already. It's already been accomplished. Yep. Okay. I'm ready to vote. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Warrants and bills. You have your list. I hope you got it. Yep. Um, any questions about any of these bills? These look like the routine list. They I'm are. still getting used to it, but. Pretty much. Um, yeah, I was surprised at the smallness of Coda and Coda gasoline nine, I assume that's nine dollars and seventy-five cents. That was purchased by um Rob for use at the uh the at the wastewater plant for the snow blower. Oh, okay. And he also bought a gas can the same time at J and H. So Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. I just momentarily wondered. Was it meant to be nine gallons? No, and no, no. Somehow, yeah. No. Um, I would be happy to move if you're ready for that. The sure. um, acceptance of the warrants, um, the total amount being twenty two thousand three hundred and seventy eight dollars and thirty eight cents. Your second. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um. Okay, I don't know where we can go without Ben being here, but um, Ben did send out a list of uh, items that are needed for the, um, what is this, 
for the wastewater treatment upgrade project. Uh, he need they need to have we need, we need to have un, these are unpaid expenses that we had relative to the project. And he's making a list of all of them. And he circulated it to me and Alex. I don't know if anybody else got it. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Into all of this. So I assume Alex has most of the res the bills for these, the proof that we paid them. That's what I guess what he needs. And uh, I added on the payments for the audit to R.H. Smith, R.H.R. Smith. That audit was a lot more than I thought it was. So, so that's where we are with that. Um, so there's nothing for us to do at the moment. No, no, just to be aware that he's working on that. And that you you did hear we they approved the um, use of the funds for the storage building. And I looked up um, the wastewater treatment plant account has one hundred and eleven thousand dollars in it. The upgrade account. So I I think we still have some outstanding bills for do we for Penta? Anybody? No? Yes, I think we do. Okay. So um, it's it's not clear to me how much is outstanding. It's not nearly that much, I don't believe. Okay. But there's uh, something on the order of twenty thousand. Oh, okay. Because we have withheld some. And um Dexter's Dexter's email references that, I think. Yeah, we have, according to Dexter, we've withheld 17,521 for the headworks and the pipe supports. Okay. And I can talk a little bit more about that. Okay, do you want to talk I, about that now? Um, or do you want to wait till? No, um, okay. that's okay. So um, Ben had asked me to follow up with um, Dexter on those, those two outstanding issues because he's got a lot of other stuff on his plate. And um, I forwarded you Dexter's email last Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess a little nudge, um, got a response right away. Yeah. Um, they were scheduled to be at the plant today to look at installing the supports for the pipes to just um, adhere to the noise issue. Mm -hmm. um, Rob said that he didn't need to have anybody there with him and I haven't heard from him whether or not they actually showed up and what the result is. Um, but I gather that um, from Dexter that they're going to um, get a price quote from the contractor for installing it within the next week. Mm -hmm. And so we should be hearing from him about that. Um, the other thing I, I think we ought to talk a little bit about um, is that estimate from ServPro, which um, Luis circulated to everybody. Did you happen to look at it? Yeah, well, when it first I, came. Well, yeah, so the total for that was uh, about $6,300, but there's a lot not included in that. So that doesn't include removing all of the ceiling tile, all of the drywall. Are they supposed to remove it or just clean it? Well, I think in order to clean it, you've got to remove it because oh. there'll be mold in it. So it's got to be removed and disposed of. At least that's what they quoted us to do. Um, so they're not just cleaning it, they're replacing it. Is that what you're saying? Not replacing it, they're just removing and carting it away. Oh, and then they'll bring it back clean? No. No, they'll tear it down and dispose of it. And but what's going to replace it? That's up to us. Oh. They, uh, they say mm. in there that... Um, does not include any reconstruction. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include 
removal of any insulation, mm -hmm. which might also be necessary if there's mold in that. And it doesn't include the drywall over area exposed to water, which I think must be the ceiling directly over that trench that's in the room mm -hmm. where the water flows because they say it's an area where it's not safe to put up ladders. Huh. So, you know, I think that the actual cost could be quite a bit more than that 6,300. And I was wondering what we want to do about following up on that. I think that's maybe something that Ben should weigh in on. So it's, it might wind up being more better to take it out and put it in what is on the walls. After all, the, the stuff that doesn't get molded. Well, yeah, I think that they are. What they should have done in the beginning. Yeah, well, they're saying that they're going to take, they're quoting us to remove, uh, to clean right. the walls, right. to remove the drywall. And um, yeah, if we're going to have to replace it, I don't see any point in putting drywall back up. Yeah, right. Hmm. Um, we may want to we may want to clarify with um, the serve pro exactly what they're planning to clean and what they're planning to remove. But as I understood it, uh, they're planning to remove that ceiling tile or ceiling drywall over so a good portion of it. And then that's got to be specially handled, carted away, and disposed of according to mold abatement regulations, whatever they are in Vermont. So are we on the hook for the Surf Pro, or is it coming from Penta? Well, that's the second question I wanted oh. to um, I wanted to, to raise. So Dexter says it's Penta's responsibility, and we should withhold it. We should withhold it? We should withhold the cost of that serve pro, yeah, from what we pay Penta. Oh, oh. Penta is Penta is telling Dexter they don't think it's their responsibility. They're telling Penta they don't think it's Penta. Penta is telling Dexter. Yeah. Penta doesn't think it's their responsibility. Oh. Oh, Penta's telling Dexter. Yeah. So there was that um, oh. series of that series of email. Um, I guess that only came to me maybe. Uh, ben sent me a series of emails about the um, about the problem issues at the um, at the plant, and um, in one email, um, Penta said to Dexter, "Let me uh, pull that up quick." Um, so Dexter said. Mold grew on the walls between substantial completion and completion of the manual control for the room fan. And it's Dexter's Tate and Howard's position that cleaning is um, Penta's responsibility. And Penta um, said that. Um, it's their contention. Um, I do not agree with the cleaning being our responsibility as they could have used the ventilation system a along but did not want to blow heat out of the building. Tying that fan to SCADA in the alarm system had nothing to do with proper ventilation of the building. So they're saying that the mold is there because we didn't ventilate it properly. And we don't know if Rob uh, followed the protocol we discussed last time about leaving it on for a certain amount of time. And um, yes, Rob left it on for eight hours. Yeah. Saw reduction in moisture. Mm -hmm. He left it on overnight and told me that it did not solve the problem. Okay. So that there was still moisture in the room. I don't know how much. Um, Um, it, how much it may have been. Um, uh, in the um, email that I forwarded you from Dexter, he he copied their um, recommendations for the protocol about 
raise the temperature in the room to 72, run the fan more often. They expect four or five times a week for 30 to 60 minutes um, would be enough to keep the room dry. And I think Rob's experience is that that's not nearly enough. Mm -hmm. But I haven't gotten his response. I can follow up with him. Uh, I haven't got his response to that recommendation. Um, but if it ran for eight hours and didn't bring the moisture down, I would expect that running it for um, 30 to 60 minutes, four or five times a week is not going to do the job. And this is not a, a, a warm, uh, a humid time of the year either. Well, the thing is that if Penta pays for the Surf Pro, then they're basically saying, we're going to pay for this every time it happens. No. You know, I, think, I mean, they're I, accepting I that, that there is a problem that that they have something to do with. Um, well, here, I think that- Here's, um, here's Ben, I'm gonna admit Ben. Ah, okay. Hi, Ben. Hi, sorry about that, guys. Just got home? Okay, let me, we're- Let me turn the light on here. Okay. So we're, we were talking about um, mold and the Surf Pro estimate and um, Dexter's email back last week. Okay. So um, I was saying that it looked to me that that estimate from Surf Pro for $6,300 was a very minimal because it doesn't include taking out any insulation and it doesn't include removing 20% of the drywall in an area where they couldn't safely raise ladders, which I assume from their sketch is over that trench or that channel, whatever you would call it. And it does include replacing. And it does not include replacing. No. So my understanding from that estimate is that they're planning on removing that ceiling tile and disposing of it and any insulation that's also contaminated and that um, then replacing material would be up to us. Is that your understanding, Ben? Um, I guess I'm not... Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure if that's what the quote says. Then. Did, did you get uh, any uh, input from the engineer? Um, yeah, I forwarded the, the uh, email we got back from him. I got back from him. You should have yep. gotten that at the end of last week. Yep. Um, so they're going to, they were going to be here this morning to take a look at the supports for the blower for the noise issue. Um, he talked about the ventilation um, well, I talked about the Surf Pro quote, which um, was supposed to have gone to them and not to us. So he hadn't seen it until I sent it on to him. And he said that this cleaning of the headworks room is Penta's responsibility, which Penta disagrees with, and future, future cleanings would be up to us. So if the mold recurs, it's our problem. Um, I said that it would be possible to automate the um, ventilation with a timer. And he suggests that we should um, pursue that with a local electrician. Um, and then he talked about um, the recommendations that they made at the beginning of the year, which was um, to raise the temperature to 72 to run the fan more often. They expected that four or five times a week for 30 to 60 minutes would um, solve the problem. And um, this was back on the 14th of January. And Rob's response was that they don't have a moisture issue at this time, so doing the test wouldn't help. Um, and I don't know whether he is 
you know, what testing he has done off and on um, during the fall. Um, after our meeting, he did run the fan um, for eight hours and it brought the moisture down. And then he ran it overnight and it didn't solve the problem. Yeah, you know, that what his email to me was it didn't solve the problem. I don't know any more than that what that means. Hmm. So we still, I would guess, have uh, have an issue there. But um, you know, maybe I should follow up with Rob on whether or not he's um, done this sort of four to five times a week testing that. Tata and Howard recommended and um, what the outcome of that was. Right. Yeah, I do think that's a good idea because until we've got a solution for maintaining the conditions so that the mold doesn't recur, then the cleanup uh, it will, it, the condition will just come back, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. so what are you saying? We should let, uh, let Rob run tests and at some point we have to decide. Well, I thought the suggestion was to install a timer and a blower so that the system could be uh, automatically exhausted perhaps even daily for 30 to 60 minutes. Well, we had um, we'd inquired of Dexter whether or not there would be a way to semi-automate the fan, because right now it's just the operator has to turn it on and off. Right. The, um, and they said, they suggested a, uh, a timer. Yeah, I thought that was a good suggestion. We can... And we can certainly do that. I don't know if we'll know this time of year when the humidity is relatively low, if that's going to be enough. But I'm not sure how long we can wait on cleaning up that mold. It's a hazard. Um, and mm -hmm. I think probably needs to be addressed. So the timer would require an electrician going in and setting it up, right? Yeah. We well, need to talk to an electrician about an appropriate timer and getting it installed. Does the timer, uh, is it activated by the amount of humidity or is it just a time thing? Automated. I, I think, think there is, I think that what he's suggesting is just a timer that would turn it on for a certain amount of time. Okay. There's every nothing. other day or every or four times a week or yeah just a okay. mechanical operation right instead right. of a person doing it right setting it up so it ran automatically just so wondered we, if there was a way that it would read the humidity in the air but i guess that's a little too complicated well that was not the suggestion in the letter but I, it doesn't matter what the suggestion was this is another right way of looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. right well i asked him about that and he didn't respond to that but he responds suggesting that we put in a timer. I mean, we can ask about humidity. So it it seems to me that the the one issue that we aren't discussing yet, and I I apologize, I didn't understand the serve pro cleaning was actually removing drywall. Now that you pointed out, Carl, I see where it says that in that analysis of what's going to be done. So then we have an additional task to replace that drywall with some kind of material. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So that's a whole aspect of the situation that I hadn't even taken in. I was picturing somehow material being scrubbed rather than replaced. Well, I, I believe that that's what they intend to do with other parts of the room, but the, the ceiling, which is drywall and porous, I think they're saying needs to be replaced. Any mold that we have on the surface of the ceiling will be in that drywall, I would guess. 
my experience from having had mold on drywall in my previous uh, home in Wisconsin, it was all the way through the drywall. Mm -hmm. It just had to be taken off and disposed of. Okay, so what's the action item here? Well, which comes first, the heart, heart or the mold? Um, big pardon. Which comes first? Which if comes we take first? if we take out the mold, we have to have, be ready to put in a new uh, a new ceiling. Right. I would think so. Yes. I don't know what happens if you just if you take it out and there's nothing there. I don't know, Ben. Do you know about the construction of that room? Uh, not in great detail. I I think taking there's a lot of unanswered questions still, but and uh, I think getting if you could continue your conversation with the engineer, Carl. Okay. Um, because the sequence of uh, events, it would, it would seem logical to me that you'd want to make sure that the ventilation is uh, being effective in keeping the humidity level down in that room so that you're not going to um, incur future mold growth. And once that's established, then going ahead with the cleanup and the replacement of any damaged drywall on the ceiling would make sense. But I, I think the, the engineer would be the best person to advise us on that. Okay. Yeah, I can follow up with Dexter. I think we should also, um, as we're following up, ask him since we're looking at um, having to replace that ceiling, what material they would recommend that we replace it with? The same that's on the oh, walls or? Right. And, and wouldn't it be logical that they would recommend replacing it with what they spec'd out for the construction? I mean, that's how they, that's how they designed the facility. Um, it'd be interesting if they came back with something different. Did they spec out anything but drywall for the ceiling? Not that I know of. Oh. So if they just spec drywall, I guess I'm not, I guess I'm not understanding what you suggest. I suggest I should just ask them for a specification of what we should replace the ceiling with. And if they come up with the same thing, then there's something wrong. We need to. And if they come up with drywall again? Yeah, it's not working. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 And um, also, I think an issue there is that Servpro is saying there's 20% of it that they can't remove because it's there's no safe place to put a ladder. Huh. And, How'd they get it up there in the first place then? Well, there was no water in there when they oh. put the ceiling up. Oh. Now there's now there's water or sewage, and um, they need a what do you call it? A, where you have you know the scaffolding. Yeah, something. that one. And I'm not sure how that would be erected over that trench. I mean, oh. Rob might be able to tell. Mm -hmm. I could follow up with Rob about that, but um, well, we got to get it out of there. Well, I guess we could we could ask if it's okay to just leave that twenty percent up there, but I'm you know that just seems to me to be putting off the inevitable. Carl, why don't you pose that question to the engineer as well? Okay, we'll do. I'll just uh, I'll just send off a long list of questions to. The Dexter and um, yeah, I mean they've uh, they've now gotten they've now gotten the surf pro quote that they requested. Yep. Um, 
you know, you provided them with some information about the, the test that Rob conducted. Mm -hmm. um, we'd like them to, you know, we'd, we'd like to get a recommendation from them about how we should proceed. Okay. And I'll follow up with Rob too about whether he has done that um, 30 to 60 minutes, four or five times a week during the time when the um, humidity was bad and, and see what effect it had. Right. And I'll, I'll see if he's got any comment on that before I talk to Dex, yep. before I write back to Dexter. Yep. Um, and then do you, have you heard from Rob Ben as to whether or not they came down to the plant to look at the blower pipes? I have not. Okay. Okay, we ready to move on? Uh, yeah, I've, I've done my bit to be gloomy for the night. Thank you. You're a lot of good work. Can I make a comment? Yeah, is, sure. uh, is, this, is this Kevin? Yes, this is Kevin. Hi. Okay, well, we're just getting to that, Kevin. And no, I, I actually, I had a... I had something on your uh, ventilation concern. If oh, okay. I didn't know if it might be helpful for you. This is Kevin. Um, uh, Kevin. Um, Kevin Douglas of Spring Douglas. Hill Construction. Right. Um, so, my question would be um, is that well, statements. The ventilation system should be able to be operated on a humidistat, which would ease your concerns and help you out a little bit. That's what I was talking about, right? Yep. A humidistat? Okay. A humidistat. I would um, probably investigate or ask questions of the engineer on how the mechanical system was designed because an exhaust fan won't do any uh, any good without some sort of air coming into the building. It creates a vacuum and it, it won't push moisture out without replacement air coming in from someplace. Um, and then the drywall on the ceilings I would look into maybe what was specified, what type of drywall was specified for use on the ceiling versus what was used. Um, much like your bathrooms, you know, your bathrooms use a, a moisture resistant drywall versus a regular drywall that's in your living room or dining room area, that sort of thing. Um, just some talking points that you might have with your engineer that could solve some of your problems. Nice. I don't know everything behind the ventilation issue that you guys have been discussing, but it sounds like that might be something. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Any, any questions for him, uh, Carl? <laughs> no. Um, okay. I have a, a question for Ben, since um, this happened before I was uh, involved with the trustees, but do we have those specs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I could take a look at the specs and or would I not be able to understand them? <laughs> you can take a look at them. Where are okay. they? So Rob has got a copy. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I believe I have a copy and we may have, and I, and I also believe we've got an electronic copy. No, that would be good. So. Okay, I'll ask Rob. That's one of the things I ask him. All right, finished? Yeah. Okay. Um, as we said, Kevin is here. Kevin, do you have something you want to say uh, regarding the your bid for the storage building? Uh, not necessarily. I'm just here to provide any sort of answers to questions you may have. Um, Did you provide us with the... Um, the uh, electrical work bid. I did not. I did not realize that that was part of the scope of work. So I. But I, I had, had asked for it, that in addition, at, after our meeting, I asked for that and your availability. You gave me the availability, but not the. Right, and my comment on the electrical was I'd, I'm not sure what the scope of work for the electrical would be, as far as how many lights or outlets or. Um, how to get the power to the building. Um, there was, there's a large portion of that that I wasn't 
privy to as far as how that was going to come about. Well, that's why I, I kind of suggested that the board seek out an electrician to get a direct bid from because then you can convey all that information to them as far as what type of lighting in the building you would would be needed, um, mm -hmm. what what size service to the building if there's not one there. I, there could be one already there. I, that 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 information I don't I don't have. Okay, that's why we thought you might check with Rob and see what was there. Mm -hmm. uh, because we did have um, Lawrence and Lober gave us gave a a a figure, but I'm not sure that it was to us or to one of the other contractors. Um, and then we, one of the other contractors, we gave him that figure, and then he added on his uh, whatever overhead figure. So we'll just have to take your bid and assume it will be about the same amount for the electrical work as the others. Well, certainly. I mean, I'm I'm more than willing to consult with uh, Rick Ham of Lawrence and Lober if that's the electrician that does work there on site and it's somebody that you want to deal with and um, coordinate with him. Um, the as far as I'm concerned, the electrical could be done outside of my contract. You could contract directly with him, save on overhead and profit costs that would go through me um, if that's your what you would like to do. Uh, or it could be done under one contract. And I mean, I'm pretty flexible as far as that's concerned. It should be pretty simple. Uh, but again, I, I just, I don't, without having some sort of information on um, what would be required or needed in the building for electrical, um, I, I, I can't go to an electrician and, and give them requirements or anything and, and have something real, a real number for you. I don't. I don't know where what information Rick based his proposal on. He went down and spoke to Rob and found out what was there. Okay, so Rob. Needed. So Rob. Rob I, is able to 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 guide everybody on that. Yeah, he he knows what uh, what what has been uh, he. It's set up. He knows what's set up and what it needs to be done. It's very okay. simple, I guess. Mm -hmm because it's all the electrical conduit is under the road already over to the building. Is that okay. correct? He did that when we, before we did the paving, he put that in. Um, okay. So anything else you want to say before, I think we're going to have to go into executive session to, to um, discuss the bids, make a final decision. That's your sense uh, board. Um, yeah, I think maybe that would be a good idea. Do we need to discuss first, uh, the response to our query to the grant, to the USDA grant manager about availability of funds? We were told that we can use the money for the storage building. Okay, so we will be going into executive session solely for the purpose of discussing the bids. Right. Okay. I'm happy to make that motion. Okay, you have the verbiage? No, I do not. <laughs> Shall I go and get it? Well, I have it, I can make the motion. Okay. That would be great, Carl. Unless you, unless you want no, to. No, no, I'm happy to have you make it. Okay, so this, I believe, um, this, I believe, requires two motions um, since it's dealing with a contract. So the first motion is I move to find the premature general public knowledge of um, the um, proposed contracts for the storage building would clearly place the municipality at a substantial disadvantage um, by reason of um, disclosing confidential information. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 
Okay, and what's your second motion? Okay. Um, second motion is a move that the board enter executive session to discuss um, proposals for contracts for the uh, construction of the storage building under provisions of Title I, Section 313A, one of the Vermont statutes. Second. Oh, I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So we're in executive session now. Dan, you want to make your motion? Sure. Uh, so pursuant to the discussion uh, we had in executive session, I'll make a motion uh, that we award the uh, construction of the storage building um, to local contractor Spring Hill um, as bid, excluding uh, electrical work. Um, uh, contingent on uh, meeting any uh, conditions that USDA may uh, impose as part of the uh, their funding the project. Their second. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations, Kevin. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with you guys. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow at the plant, right? <laughs> if you're requesting me to be there, what time? No, no, no. <laughs> Nail. Okay. Um, anything else, Kevin? Do you have any other questions? Um, I don't think so at this time, other than um, I, my understanding is we're just going to wait on some clarifications as far as the any sort of uh, contractual type paperwork or um, how, how would we like to proceed from here? Mm. Yeah, so we'll, we'll need to we'll need to get you, uh, I guess, a you know, signed contract or something. Do you have any blank ones you use? Yeah, do you, can you furnish us with something to? Um, I will, uh, I'll put something together for you guys, something pretty simple. I mean, it's okay. early, small project, so it's not yeah. that, shouldn't be too complicated. And yeah. um, I will uh, try to get to you before the end of the week. Okay. okay. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Thank you. good night. All right. Any other business? Uh, fire station building. It's on the agenda. Nothing. Well, it's always there. Yeah. Is there anything? Nothing. No. Guess it um, be. Yeah. Did anybody look further into that um, grant information? That what grant information? That um, I forget who sent them. Oh, Art. Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. Um, before we adjourn, I, I did send out an email about um, sort of trying to wrap up the uh, the grant funding submissions for uh, USDA for the wastewater project. Um, Louise, you you sent me a few more expenses that we that that you found that we could submit. Yeah. Um, we need, yeah. You know, we need like the invo copies of the invoices, or um, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of a receipt. That for Alex the has expenses, all of plus the other ones that were on the list. Is that something that you can dr dig up, or where would where would I find that? It's all at Alex's hands. It's all Alex has all of it. Well, yeah, because I give him the bills, and he has everything, all the paperwork. Okay. Um, would, would anyone possibly have time to work with Alex on on um, compiling those receipts so then I can I can uh, put together the submission to USDA um, how could we do that oh, good I question. mean he, he has this list right and he just has to dig them out yeah I haven't I haven't uh, corresponded with him since I sent that out yeah. The only thing that he might not have is the Stantec 
evaluation report. Right. Uh, it's somewhere. I found the actual some of the actual paperwork, but it, there's nothing on right. it about the price, the what they charged us. Yeah, it's probably you're... under about 14 years of dust at this point. Right. Okay. So he can take care of everything else that he just has to dig it all out, I guess. Okay. Ben, would you like me to get with him on that? Alex, or... that would be, that'd be great if you could take that on. Sure. Um... These dates that you have, is that the date when it occurred or what? I think that's that date would have come to me from Alex. So my guess is that's the date he paid it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so, so if he had his checkbook, could his check receipts be um, the canceled checks, sir? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, at least you know where it, they're generally sort of in the same area, right? Eight, nine, September, October, November. I mean, uh, the other way around. No, some of those so, go back quite a ways because there were look, they were um, there were some well, smaller expenses that uh, didn't get um, included in the uh, previous submissions to USDA. So we're trying to get things cleaned up. July, August. Yeah, September. check the year though. Yeah, I know, but that's only yeah. last year. July was okay. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff from. I think there's something from 2018 in there. No, and then, of course, the. You don't have 18. No. No. Okay. February, 2019 is the earliest. Okay. And also, you have a uh, administration. He can charge that more of that, right? You you don't have that on here for. Um, Oh, 2470 administration. Is that like buying stamps or something? But what about his time? Uh, yeah, I don't know if that counts. Okay. For this purpose, at least. Okay. I think but, that was stamps or something for mailing. Yeah. Or, I, don't, I don't know what that was. It could have been the survey. Um, yeah, there we go. But the big thing is the Stantec. And I'll see if I can find any, if I have anything. Yeah. Okay. I have some stuff here. All right. And then did you say there were some more invoices, yes. Louise, that you'd looked up? Yeah. All the R.H.R. Smith so. stuff. This okay. 2000. Well, I can forward to you the email that Louise sent yeah. me. Okay. Then and, so I can follow up on that with Alex. Yeah. Now. Yep. And the article in the and the and the reformer too for the storage building. Okay. All right. Carl, I just sent that to you. Okay. Anything else? Um, should we put on a future agenda um, just for my uh, use? Um, protocols in finding a new trustee? Uh, sure. I'd love to hear how it's been done before. Um, I'm wondering whether- I think there's a protocol? Beats me. <laughs> um, I, I know how I was asked and it was very flattering. Um, <laughs> well, we try that one again. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm concerned. Yeah. I think I'm. I think we're we're losing a very valuable resource. And, yes. uh, I want to make sure that we um, that we really uh, discuss the kinds of skills and experience that um, right. we we don't want to lack going forward. Right. So, I think that's a good idea that we should talk about what attributes we're looking for. Yeah, right. New trustee before we start approaching people. I, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So future agenda. All right. Okay. Yeah. Remind me if I forget. Okay. Because I am old, you know. Jeez Louise, that's twice. <laughs> I'll, put it, I'll put it in the minutes, Louise. That <laughs> that's my excuse. Really noted. All right. Uh, Anything else? 
It's time for bed. I'm old. Okay. <laughs> okay, there was a motion to adjourn. Is it seconded? I'll second All that. in favor, aye. Say aye. 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 Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. See you in two weeks. Okay.